Hey there, Bonnie. How you doing? So I'm right in the middle of doing an acting shot here with our new character, Jake, for iAnimate. And I thought to myself, okay, well, how about I just start recording how I prepare to do lip sync and facial acting for a shot like this. Now, it's a fairly detailed shot where we've got, you know, 342 frames of body animation acting, right? And what we want to do is try to get a nice believable feel through the facial acting too. Um, so just on this particular shot, sometimes I will actually do a shot and I will go ahead and do the facial maybe first and the lip sync first, you know, all just like with a face cam. And sometimes I'll go ahead and do the body animation and rough that in first. So I kind of know where the head angles are, where the body's going to be on certain accents. Um, so when I'm preparing to do facial for my shot, and what I'll do is I'll grab my trusty camera here, my flip cam, and I'll basically just set it up right in front here and just do a close-up of my face, saying the words of the actual dialogue in sync. Now, it has to be in sync. Uh, years ago, you know, in 2D animation, we used to have like mirrors sort of here, and we used to kind of mouth out the words and go, hey, I owe you, blah, 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 blah. And what you're doing is sort of saying the words in slow motion. So when you've got to do like something that has some fast talking in there, you don't really know which words to kind of leave out or slur, you know, to make the animation read perfectly. So again, I'll go ahead and shoot myself basically with this flip cam, you know, again and again and again on a loop, like listening to the audio track and try to get my words and my facial, my facial acting in sync with the audio, okay? So what I did here, if you look on my screen, I basically shot myself close up going through the actual lip sync and I imported that movie file into my BG column and flipbook. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is go through the whole thing and break it down phonetically. So like what each down is actually saying, I'm going through going, finding my keys. Like where's the B? There's the B. Boom. Coming into the E's where the tongue comes up, that's where the N is. And what we've got now is, if I play it. But it must have been humiliating, wasn't it? That you, to be given a time out by your boss? No. No. You wanted to get back at my client, didn't you? That's when you decided to frame him for murder. But it must have been humiliating. So what we've got now is something that's really in sync and I can really prepare and analyze each shape as I'm animating. Now, how am I going to do that? How am I going to get this reference into Maya? So all I've got to do is pick the BG column, okay, the BG and level one. I'm going to go file, export, export out stills. And I use PNGs and I'm going to composite the frames and I'm just going to call these uh, lip sync ref okay uh, composite frames i don't need them to be huge because basically what we're going to do is bring them into maya on an image plane okay so open uh, my pg png folder here save it and uh, it's saving them all in there it's a fairly long shot so it's nice to be able to go ahead and record the whole thing and that way i've got like a really nice clear idea of the actual shapes that are in sync with the Maya timeline, right? Now, what I can do is decide how I'm gonna push those shapes or, or if I've kind of missed any shapes, I can kind of analyze those and say, okay, well, I'm gonna add in an open mouth there where, there was, where the mouth is actually closed. And it, it just kind of gives me this great reference now that I can use. So use today's technology to help get your research and preparation done, okay? So if I open up my Maya, here, all right. Now I'm gonna basically see. I've already shot like my whole shot here with uh, with live action, and I'm breaking that down. And you know, parts of this like I'm trying to push, you know. So there's there's things in here that are definitely like the live action reference. So I'm getting this nice, believable, grounded feel. And then I'm gonna be pushing that stuff, like I'm right in here, like getting more accents in there, like with the the head nods and and bringing the hands up like a little faster. You know, I'm making definite choices when I'm actually duplicating this, you know, and analyze my live action reference and getting that to be a much more sophisticated performance, all right? So now I'm just gonna grab my image plane here, right? Hit Control A, I'm gonna bring up my attribute editor and go ahead and source 
like where those PNGs are, the lip sync one. So I can just pick on any one, doesn't matter, right? Hit open. And I'm going to head and use the image sequence. So that's synced with the Maya timeline. Okay, so now if I scrub through here, boom, I've got my lip sync in there, right? So now if I put on my sound. But it must have been humiliating, wasn't it? So now, okay. So what I would then do is I've got like this audience camera right here. So now I'm going to basically rip that off, right? Tear off a copy of that, okay? I can hide my character. I don't really need to see my character or the curves, right? Just kind of make this nice and big, okay? Um, <clears throat> I can offset it, like so that's full in frame like that. And then here, I don't really need to see it, right? So I can turn off the camera there. And now I can basically go through my whole shot and start to pose out the mouth with these keys, all right? So now, like, it's taken all the guesswork out of it. I know exactly what word we're actually seeing, right? If I pick on this window, I can scrub through it. Wasn't it? To be given a timeout by your boss? No. no. You wanted to get back at my client, didn't you? And what's really cool about, like, like analyzing your facial <laughs> performance in this kind of way is you can really kind of look at seeing, like, how the face works as a whole, right? Like, even though you might be doing the lip sync first and then the eyes or the eyes first and then the lip sync, whichever it is, you can start to see how it all relates to each other, right? And like seeing how far I can push these things, where my tongue is, you know, it's always kind of one of those things that animators kind of leave till the very end, like unless like it's a really close-up performance. But now you can really see what shapes like the tongue actually helps to make, you know, so you might be able to kind of keep the mouth basically in one pose for certain shapes and just use the tongue going up and down, all right? And then other times you kind of go like, well, maybe like right here at the very beginning, I totally missed the B sound, right? But I can look at, like right here, that's the uh sound right there, right? I can just close the mouth before that and start to form that word. And when I'm thinking about lip sync, I'm thinking about like the mouth preparing for the next sound, not just for the sound that you're making now, but it's actually preparing for the next sound. So a B followed by a U might look different than a B followed by an E sound, like B or B, right? The B the mouth might be a little bit wider because we're preparing for that next sound. Or the uh, the B might be a little bit more pushed in, like in the corners. Right? So pay attention to all these things, like to get your animation to have that real nice, believable lip sync. And most importantly, it's going to be in sync. All right. See you next time, guys. Bye.